Welcome back to the NFL Prop Shop. We're already in week five of the football season. I can't believe it, but here we are Friday night, October 4th. And uh, we're giving you guys our player props and a parlay for Sunday, October 6th. I'm so excited to have my guy LJ from H-Town. He's here. He's ready to rock with us. The prop guru himself. LJ, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, Mike. You know, I always love joining you, man. We we make money together, been doing it for a while. So I'm glad that you allowed me to come on talk so it talk some NFL props with you because I do a prop show on Sunday morning, as you know, on my channel. Sure. So yeah, man, I love my props. I, that's a good way for us to get paid, take advantage of vulnerable situations. So let's get to it. Well, maybe we're gonna catch a sneak peek from Sunday, but uh again, I'm so excited to have you back in action. We spent a lot of time together on screen and I'm so thankful that you're here to do this with us. So uh, let's get the business, LJ. I know we're going to open the floor up. It is all yours, my friend. Talk to us about the first prop you want to use to get paid. Yes, sir. Let's go over to this Colts and Jacksonville game. Um, Colts and Jacksonville divisional game, as you know. Um, I don't have a side in this game. I, I just believe both offenses are dealing with a lot right now. Uh, Jonathan Taylor's injured on the Colts side. And Jacksonville can't seem to score. You know, I saw him last week versus the Texans. Even though the Texans had to grind out a victory versus that team, we still pulled it off. So I'm looking at Brian Thomas Jr. I got a good look at this guy last week versus us. And they have his receiving prop at over 56 and a half, minus 114. And this is the reason why. He had 86 yards on us last week. And we where well, our defense isn't a slouch, but he was able to get into the zone get some good looks uh, that Trevor Lawrence was able to find him, you know, on the outside, you know, catching some tough passes. So he is very productive on that side of the field. Not to mention, when I'm looking at the Colts, um, they are allowing the number one receiver to average 100 and run receiving yards in their four games. Nico Collins had 117. Romeo Dodds had 62. Uh, Aduze for the Bears had 112. And Pickens last week just had 113. So, they're very vulnerable, the Colts, on the uh, wide receiver situation. So I'm thinking Brian Thomas Jr. will continue the production that he put up last week. Like I said, he had 86 yards last week. And it's only at 56 and a half. He clears that easily, in my opinion. Trevor Lawrence is going to be looking for him probably mostly the whole game. He's dealing with some things with AT ATN. And uh, Ingram, his tight end, is dealing with some things. He's not been ruled in yet. So Brian Thomas Jr. gets a lot of production on that team. So. I'm looking for him to go over his over 56 and a half receiving yards. I love it. That you know, it's uh, another week that I'm uh, I'm envious of having you guys here uh, in in production with us because uh, I talked to you backstage. It's a fantasy option for me here. Brian Thomas just got a huge green light to go get it done. I love you opening the card up that way, and uh, I know we're going to get paid with that one. So let me transition. Let me move on over here. We're going to catch the nine. 30 start out there over across the pond in London playing, I believe at Tottenham field. And we've got ourselves an opportunity where I'm going to take advantage again of a quarterback, another player prop in the passing yards. I'm going to go to Aaron Rodgers. They need this game. It's a big deal for him out there. And he's got a ton of experience with this Minnesota Viking squad. You know, you look at these numbers and you look at this deal uh, this Minnesota Vikings team, despite being 4-0, mm -hmm. allows the most passing yards mm -hmm. in the NFL out there. They're terrible. Well, they're they're at least the worst. That being said, they're allowing 274 and a half passing yards um, to the opposing quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. And we look at Aaron Rodgers, his career or his process out there, uh, you know, he hasn't gone over the 300 mark. It's been 26 straight games. We know when they go across the pond, you know, we tend to see overs kind of rain here. But what I expect is Minnesota does pull up. Minnesota's defense, as I mentioned, allowing that leaky 274 and a half. I found Aaron Rodgers over 225 and a half passing yards at minus 113. Mm -hmm. We're not going to stop there, though. It's the latter game. 250 plus passing yards is plus Ooh. 172. Him to go 275 plus at plus 320. As much as I like that 300 plus at plus 600, I can't go, I can't add, I can't advocate that. He just doesn't have it in him at this point. But I love those latter spots as well, LJ. I think that's going to be some great plus money to get us paid. Hey, man, I like that because if the Jets are going to try to come win this game, they're going to have to do it through the air because you can't run on Minnesota's defense. So 
Right. If they're going to get some production through the air, Aaron Rodgers is going to have to do that. So, hey, I like that look as well. Very, very good look right there. Let's roll, baby. Hey, let's move on to this one. Sunday night game, Mike. We got the Dallas Cowboys. Road dog going out to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And we already know that Dallas cannot run the ball or stop the run. So <laughs> I'm already on the Steelers, full disclosure. You know, I bet, already bet them. But we're going to look at Jake Ferguson for the Dallas Cowboys, the tight end, over 45 and a half receiving yards. And this is why we're doing that. When you're playing Dallas, we already know, I just said, they can't run the ball. And these defenses know that the only player that he's looking at, for the most part, is CeeDee Lamb. So if you have him double team and you got him zoned up, who's the next target that Dak looks for? He looks for his tight end, yeah. Jake Ferguson. He's hit this prop two out of his last three games. And the fact that they're going to be bringing pressure on Dak Prescott, that Pittsburgh with that hellacious pass rush, I believe Ferguson can slip out into the side, slip out into the zone, and have an easy look for Dak Prescott to bail him out on some short yardage to where he won't get sacked. And he can get rid of the ball quick. So I'm going to trust Ferguson. I cashed on him last week, and I believe he continues that streak. So I'm going to take Ferguson over 45 and a half receiving yards for the Dallas Cowboys. I uh, love a little primetime action out there. The Steelers, that's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see how that one cooks off for us. Uh, look, you already talked a little Houston Texans. Let me go to your backyard. Okay. And let me talk about a little... Um, what do I want to say? Is it a revenge spot? Is it a rivalry spot? I'm not entirely sure, but man, the trash talking has reigned supreme. If you haven't watched this situation out there, Diggs goes and gets himself two touchdowns in week one with them Houston Texans. He starts running his mouth, right? It's so nice to be involved in the passing offense when we catch a win. What does Josh Allen do after he catches a win? He says, oh, man, it's nice to be able to win a game without guys caring about their stats. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking at Diggs here. I think this is a great anytime touchdown prop. Mm. Uh, he got two in his first week. He's gone over his last three. And he's priced at plus 165. In fact, C.J. Stroud's got himself six passing touchdowns. He's got two to Nico Collins. But you got to manage Diggs because you know he's going to become a, an earful at the very least. I think he's good for a touchdown here. Not just the fact that it's his former squad in Buffalo. Add the trash talking. Add the fact that I think this game's a shootout. A plus 165 anytime touchdown prop seems like a gift for me. Give me some digs touchdown. Plus 165 in the, uh, not homecoming, but I guess it's the revenge spot for these guys out there. LJ, I know it's a big deal here. Uh, a special treat for the prop shop. Talk to us about how we're going to go about this player prop parlay. Yes, sir. We are going to the Arizona Cardinals on the road, going out to a divisional rival, the San Francisco 49ers. And we already know Cardinals came off a tough loss last week versus Washington. And the 49ers, you know, they're dealing with some injuries. You know, McCaffrey's pretty much going to be out for half of the season. And a couple of offensive linemen, you know, they're dealing with some issues as well. But we're going to go over to three-player three prop on the San Francisco side. We're going to take advantage of a vulnerable Arizona defense, Mike, and this is the reason why. Brock Purdy, I'm going to take his over one-and-a-half touchdown passes simply because the passing defense of the Arizona Cardinals is horrible. And uh, let me get to the numbers just to put some numbers to it. They give up 209, uh, what is it, 208 passing yards, but they're allowing their opponent quarterback to average 78 point completion percentage. So I believe Purdy will have a lot of looks in this game. You know, he has weapons that he can, you know, contribute to with Debo, you know, like you can Mason. So I believe out of all those weapons that he has, he should be able to get two plus touchdowns versus this Arizona defense. And we're going to parlay it with Jordan Mason's. Anytime touchdown, and it is juiced at minus 235. So that lets you know that these books are guaranteeing Jordan Mason to get a touchdown. And I see why they're guaranteeing it, because the Arizona Cardinals have allowed a rushing touchdown to either the running back or the quarterback 15 out of their last 20 games, Mike, going wow. all the way back to last year. So. Uh, I believe Brock Purdy's not looking to score a touchdown. I think he's looking to pass for a touchdown. So I'm going to trust Jordan Mason in the red zone, get a touchdown, and that's going to be the second leg of the parlay. 
And the third leg is going to be Brandon Ayuk over 59 and a half receiving yards. And the reason why I'm taking that is because I believe Brandon Ayuk used these first four games as a preseason because he wasn't in training camp and he didn't play none of the preseason. So these first four games, he had to get back acclimated to game, you know, conditions, you know, and things like that. So I believe he's gotten over that. I believe he starts this game versus a vulnerable defense to get back to his production with his receiving. I believe Brock Purdy is going to be looking for him a lot. So I'm going to add the 59 and a half receiving yards with the Jordan Mason touchdown with the Brock Purdy over one and a half touchdown passes. That puts you at a plus 292 parlay. I am in. You had me at <laughs> in-game parlay. I love that little opportunity to get some big cash. It's a great look. And, uh, you know, I know that's a treat for us with the player prop parlays. Let's go to the portion of the show where we uh, we give ourselves either a side or a total. We've put two legs together. LJ and I talked about it backstage. We got ourselves a plus 264 player. Or I'm sorry, a side prop mm -hmm. or a total prop parlay. And I'm going to kick it off. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to give you guys the under. Yeah, I know. It's the sexy under in the Indianapolis-Jacksonville <laughs> game here. And I got it at 46, the under 46. But tell you what, we look at these games, we look at these teams – LJ talked about it at the onset of the show, uh, and I love when we align with some of these spots as we're talking back and forth here. Yeah, we've got Anthony Richardson. He should be playing for the Colts. Jonathan Taylor's the question mark. If you look at the Jacksonville side, LJ talked about it earlier. Uh, yeah, their struggle in the score is probably, probably the kindest way to say it. They're also mm -hmm. questionable. Travis Etienne, Evan Ingram, mm -hmm. and uh, you look at these two teams, uh, it's just got under kind of written about it. It's uh, certainly an opportunity and a in a divisional game, but I'm going to give you guys some numbers. You know the deal here. I love these trends, and uh, we're going to call it the uh, windy weather factor out there. Certainly, we've got two teams that have played previously back-to-back -back games or consecutive games that had gone over the total. You add in wind elements over eight miles per hour. What we get ourselves here is a 51 and 24 player advantage to the under 51 and 24 with wins over eight miles per hour. I'm going to take advantage. I'm going to take that first leg of the parlay, LJ. It's going to be the Colts Jaguars under 46, my friend. What do you think? Hey, I like it. Just because we don't know the uh, the condition of Anthony Richardson. And, you know, Flacco's been playing, you know, well, coming off the couch. Yeah. He, he did it versus Cleveland last year. Looks like he's going to do it again versus the Colts. But I like the under just because it's a divisional game. And the Colts don't do well in Jacksonville, history shows. but. You know, both teams are, you know, dealing with some things. So, hey, I can definitely see an under as well. All right, Mike, let's go to my side. And let's I'm go. loving this one. I'm loving it. Another divisional game. As you know, I love attacking divisional games. Sure. Baltimore Ravens on the road versus the Cincinnati Bengals. And we already know the numbers with the Ravens. Number one in rushing. Number one in total yards. Number one on defense as far as rushing yards allowed. So they run the ball and they stop the run. So that's a great combination to be a successful team in this league sure. for the most part. Uh, but we know that the Ravens tend to give up leads late in games for the most part, like to keep these teams viable, you know, try to scare you off a, 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 a against the spread and try to just win the game. So we're going to focus on the Baltimore Ravens early, Mike. I got them at first half, minus the half, minus 105. And it's simply the reason why. The Ravens, 9-1 and one against the spread in the first half on the road going back to 2023 wow. last year. They're 16-7 and seven against the spread in the first half overall, you know, in their last, what, that's what, 24 games for the most part. But I like this one. I did some digging with this matchup. Lamar Jackson pretty much owns the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, Mike. Ravens, first half versus the Bengals with Lamar Jackson start. They are 8-1-1, one, and one, straight up, averaging an 8.4 margin in the 10 starts that he's played. They're also 8-2 and two straight up overall. But we're going to just stick to the first half. This is where Baltimore does the best damage early and often. I believe they're going to establish the run game. And they're going to jump on the Bengals quick and make the Bengals play from behind. 
Now, I mentioned the Ravens tend to let off the gas in the second half. But that first half, they steamrolled. And I believe they're going to want to make a statement in this divisional game, which Lamar Jackson has success with this Cincinnati Bengals team. So I'm all on the Ravens, Mike. First half, minus the half, minus 105. I think that's a great look here, especially factor in Cincinnati gets off the schneid and beats up that Carolina Panthers team 34-24. You know, things aren't right in Cincy land out there. You know, Joey Burrow can certainly go out in that second half and nuke any kind of defense out there, knifing it all through the air. But, man, them Ravens, they finally got their things moving in the right direction. Big wins off of the Bills out there was a huge revenge spot. I love to start early. I think that's a great look. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. That's a nice little plus 264 casher to get everybody paid. And, uh, man, I can't wait for NFL Week 5, LJ. And I'm so thankful that you came here and rocked with us on the NFL Prop Shop, my friend. Uh, tell them what you got going on. I know you're doing all kinds of things in social media land to help people get winning tickets. Tell them where they can find you. Hey, man, y'all can find me all on Twitter, man, at LJ Sports Media. Put all my content up there. You know, go like, go subscribe. Uh, you can check me out on YouTube as well. Uh, just type in LJ from Houston, or you can put Raw Words Podcast. It, it, anyone comes up. I just did my week uh, five NFL picks me and uh, Trot Lamb. Just did that video. So that video is up right now. And uh, like I said, every Sunday morning, I do my NFL prop show. I give you my five best props for Sunday to see if we can get some money. And I'm going to be on a script with Wham as well over at you, you Banging Sports on Sunday as well. So, yeah, I got a lot going on. A lot of people demand my time. But, hey, I love doing it because I'm very passionate about what I do. You know, this, this sports betting has changed my life, Mike, and, and, and I love it. A lot of people can't find their passion in life, but I'm blessed that I'm allowed to do it, and I enjoy doing it. And I love capping it with my guys that also enjoy loving to do it with me too. So. Always appreciate you, Mike. Let me come. Fantastic, on. man! I appreciate you so much. Shout out! I can't wait to see you and Trotland get after it. That's my boy, and uh, yep. it's great you guys have synced up to get it done. Uh, thank you so much, LJ. Thanks to everybody rocking with us, guys. Hit that thumbs up button on your way out the door. Good luck with your cash. Good luck with your cap, and have yourselves a great NFL Sunday from Sports Money for LJ from H Town and all of the crew out there. Good luck. Good gambling. See you guys soon. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.